the extent to which, I mean, books like this attend to attempt to expand the boundaries of kind of traditional legal, legal professional literature, uh, I think just as a general matter, um, is going to become more and more important because you can only generate so many treatises with respect to the existing, um, existing um, IP legal structure. And what, what's really going to be a challenge is to provide contributions that go beyond this. And so a press like Oxford, which is in a position to, uh, to support projects like this, I think is, is crucial, but also encouraging authors. And also, and there's a sec second aspect, it's also the ability uh, to uh, develop the awareness among the readers. That is to say, there's a, there's a challenge which is a partnership challenge between the press and, and myself as authors. How, part again, particularly in light of um, um, at trying economic times when you, everybody thinks twice about what books they're going to buy, um, we think um, that there's a, a challenge but also a wonderful opportunity to uh, a, develop in your potential readership the awareness of the importance of books like this as not um, nice to have but no less essential to have than, um, than, the, uh, than the, the hoary, and I'll H-O-A-R-Y, um, hoary classics which we all have in our, uh, in our, in our bookshelves and which we also, but we want to get beyond that. The profession is beyond that. I'm involved in a in a pretty widespread uh, IP blog, and so I've and I must admit this is must confess, even though it's not directly related to the book, it it it, it has been kind of a game changer for me the last eight years of doing this the way I view the profession, and I and both in terms of the content and the the, the participants, but um, I think having the immediacy of blog such as the one I'm involved in, which carries all the IP topics and they'll be covered within another one, two, or three day period. So you'll have copyrights, patents, etc., all within a one or two or three day period. I think it's bringing home in real time something that we may not have been aware of so much before social media because of the time factor. But now, almost you're bombarded. We can bombard readers um, in a positive way uh, in real time with this multiplicity of subjects within under the IP canopy and I think it, it will help make them more receptive to the idea. I mean I know one of the things I want to do going forward uh, in the blog is to actually create a separate section where, where um, blog readers together with myself um, will identify cases that have um, an overlap, uh, overlap as the focus because one of the things we still need to do is to bring it more to bear on an ongoing basis. The book is a fixed piece of time and it says what it says and it has the ability to overview the subject, but we now need the additional piece of on an ongoing basis to convince readers, to show readers, to have readers show us that in fact uh, it is something which is encountered on a daily basis. First of all, we didn't include the patent trademark overlap for a variety of reasons. We decided not to, but we've already seen that uh, I'm going to be involved in a, in a conference at the end of the year, and we've been asked uh, on, on overlapping rights from the trademark point of view, trademarks plus something, but we've been asked, can we add a session on patents? So there's obviously some felt need that that's an overlap that should be addressed and it's, it's, it's been a real challenge is trying to do it but it, there have been what I have found out that we were a little too facile about rejecting it in the book and we could have pushed it more and we could have pushed it forward and we're going to push it forward in December. The other thing is that I think um, these cognate rights such as privacy, personality and unfair competition because there's, there's no harmonization as to the extent we have in, because of international treaties like copyright, etc. I think we're going to see that emerge, particularly privacy, because privacy in some ways may partially supplant IP in terms of importance over the next, in the next 10 or 20 years, and we're seeing that in a kind of way. But whether it supplants it or becomes an equal partner, it's clear that privacy concerns um, will become more important and we need to take that into account as we view privacy 
in, in, the, in context of overlapping rights. We do have one chapter which reflects the current view, which is uh, privacy and it, it, uh, personality and trademarks, which is the classic way, and even there, the difference between American law and, say, European, UK law is vast. And we're only, that's only going to develop. So that's, that's how I see it going, and it's not a, it's not a static um, set, of, uh, set of contents.